seven, two, five, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Welcome to the Cryptonimatron, and today I'm doing a token to watch. I haven't done one in a while. But here it is, this is Expire. Now Expire is a blockchain based spend management system. And what that means is they're used by businesses to uh, control their spending and how that's managed. And usually it's done by uh, people called fund managers or um, spend managers, administrators for example. And they've got the job of uh, managing everything that the company spends. Well. This system is going to use the blockchain and incorporate artificial intelligence as well to make companies save money, increase efficiency and increase productivity. So let's have a look at the project. And um, first of all, we'll start with the competition. So looking at the established competition, now we've got uh, Kaupa, Comply Advantage, Silverfinch, and Fundapps. And I think um, out of the four competitors that are listed here, uh, they are used for invoicing and um, you know controlling what the company does basically, but uh, at an administrative level. But Expire has a lot of advantages over the other uh, competitors by using the blockchain and implementing artificial intelligence technology. Um, they're obviously going to have uh, an added advantage. So. Um, they, some of them will provide seamless interdepartmental communication, meaning everything goes through the same, the same platform, everything goes through the same route. Um, Axpire also um, offers complete or modular deployment, which three of the other uh, competitors do. None of the other competitors, however, unsurprisingly, uh, offer AI-enabled solutions. Um, there's also an advantage that Expire offers dynamic cost appro app apportionment, and uh, Expire can be used across multiple industries as well. It's not just pigeonholed into office administration. Um, so really the, the biggest competitor is Kaupa. Now in terms of blockchain competitors or competitors that have uh, launched an ICO and are new to the fintech space, I couldn't really find any that are in direct competition with Expire. The closest one really was Populous and they're not exactly uh, in the same field. Um, they do offer invoice financing. They are an invoice finance platform, uh, a peer-to-peer -peer, um, finance platform, but um, they are a global invoice trading platform that's built on the blockchain. And um, they basically are looking at financing using invoices. So if you've got an unpaid um, invoice outstanding, you can then uh, sell that on to another buyer and they take on the debt and uh, basically pay you for that invoice so that you can free up cash reserves. So that's really what Populous do. Not exactly uh, what Expire are offering, but again, it was the closest one I could find. If you know of any competitors that are offering similar services on the blockchain, please post in the comments below. Let us know, let the community know, and uh, let me know what your thoughts are on the competitors, if they are, um, if you, in your opinion, if they're a better proposition or if Expire has the edge. So let's look at the problems they want to solve now. And first off is businesses waste a lot of money. And that's a big issue. A lot of money goes missing um, because, you know, asset managers are overspending or, you know, funds are mismanaged um, and companies end up losing money as a result. And as a result of that, companies are not as profitable as they should or even could be. And as I said, asset managers generally overspend in the mid and back office by about 15 to 25%. That's an overwhelming, um, overwhelmingly large amount of money uh, to be uh, losing on a regular basis. So reg tech uh, spending, and reg tech is regulatory spending, will increase dramatically from 4.8% last year, 2017, to an estimated 34.4% by 2020. Too. And, um, you know, the reason for this is, uh, um, again, more, um, you know, uh, regulations have to be um, uh, dealt with, and that means more spending on them and, uh, you know, more hoops to jump through, so to speak. 
So high unnecessary levels of staff costs are another issue. And to give you an example, a city in London have 30,000 compliance staff. And um, you know that is for three bank compliance departments. And that could fill London's Wembley Stadium. So that is uh, a, quite an incredible amount of staff they have. And uh, you know even a 50% reduction could save the bank $1.2 billion a year. That's uh, quite phenomenal. So you know they've got high unnecessary levels of staff costs just for the regulatory aspects alone. So currently a payment ecosystem to manage expenses through an automated process, it doesn't exist yet. It's simply, uh, simply not available. So Expire want to build one. And normally data is siloed or stored between non-compatible software. So you've got database engines, you've got um, you know, uh, spreadsheets, uh, PDF documents, paper. Uh, again, all, you know, over a number of uh, non-compatible softwares as well. And, um, and, and, and that's really where your inefficiency comes from. And again, information is still stored on paper, PDFs and spreadsheets, even now uh, when the technology is available to avoid using those mediums altogether. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's massive inefficiency there. So the um, it's stuff that's left unaddressed really in the uh, current software marketplace, um, you know, uh, we don't maximize profit profitability, we don't comply financially, um, we don't automate, you know, we, do, we have little product uh, productivity and we have little interdepartmental communications and um, we have low spend vis visibility. So we, you know, we, we actually don't really know what we're spending. And as a result, we don't have any meaningful data analytics to build on. So this is where Expire um, are coming in with their product to fill a gap that they see in the market. So let's take a close look at the company and its aims. Now, first off, Expire is a cloud-based and AI or artificial intelligence enabled blockchain payment processing company. You could also call it a job marketplace and business spend management system on the blockchain, as they frequently called themselves. So already they have existing and real revenues coming in from clients. Um, this is because they're a spin-off from a company called LSG LLC, and they're an insure tech software as a service company that has a history of working with Fortune 500 and household name clients such as Nike, Coca-Cola, and even NFL. The list of clients that they've worked with before is available on the Expire um, homepage, and um, I've linked to it below, of course, in the description. Go and have a look at the list of clients. Very impressive indeed. Um, some uh, heavy hitting clients there, for sure. Um, they were founded in January 2017, and um, interestingly enough, they are actually accredited to ISO 9001-2015 and ISO 27001-2013. So um, they already have the um, business management um, accreditation there, uh, which is interesting and something to bear in mind. So their aims are uh, to build the world's first blockchain-based spend management system called Resolver. I called it Revolver earlier on, it's Resolver. It's aimed at fund managers or managers um, at banks, hedge funds, private equity firms and others um, to deal with resource and the time costly processes of allocating and apportioning outside vendor costs to each fund, basically. Um, they're currently building out a front end add-on as well to handle RFPs. And they will have eventually a complete uh, software suite of apps when they're done. So as far as applications are concerned, the uh, suite will expand to create seamless digital connections across all key functional departments and stakeholders. And these will include uh, legal, compliance and regulatory, fund accounting, administration, and also finance. And uh, some of the key benefits that I'll list very quickly, uh, they will uh, remove human manual processes. So obviously that will increase efficiency and productivity, getting rid of you slow humans. Um, they will replace PDF and Excel with digital workflows, again, all towards improving efficiency. Uh, they will ensure minimal touch points in the process. They will reduce the cost of operational management in, um, by doing so, and they will enable electronic interdepartmental communications as well. 
and they will track and manage workloads, timelines, and aging. Some more benefits include uh, to connect disparate legacy technologies. So, uh, you know, um, other old technologies that don't talk to each other uh, can be um, or can communicate through the um, Expire platform. They will provide digital audit trails as well, which will be very interesting, especially if you're an auditor um, going through paperwork, you can instantly pull stuff up um, and be able to see everything that you need to see to ensure that the, um, a, a, you know, the, the process has been complied with. They're gonna reduce or remove data quality errors. They're gonna enhance compliance reporting capabilities. They're going to provide robust data analytic dashboards and they're going to deliver it via highly secure software as a service model. So a lot of interesting um, uh, implementations they're going to make and as you can see all of this is going to streamline the process, the um, spend management process is going to make it more efficient. That means you're going to require less personnel for higher productivity. So just to highlight to you the clients that LSG have worked with before, you can see here, very impressive list of clients indeed. Uh, some of the biggest companies in the world are listed on there, um, you know, in, in various different industries as well. You can see Shell, um, Nike, um, you know, Nissan even. So yeah, the, the, the um, client list is very, very impressive indeed. So let's take a look at the market. Now, Expire currently operates in a number of markets within the software as a service industry. Um, the enterprise software market currently stands at about $351 billion a year, which is quite staggering. And uh, their focus is on the FinTech, RegTech or regula uh, regulatory technology and enterprise resource or ERP uh, technology areas. So enterprise resource planning or ERP is the integrated management of core business processes often in real time and it's mediated by software and technology. So in case you didn't know what that means. Um, the artificial intelligence market in fintech alone is expected to grow from $1.3 billion in 2017 to $7.3 billion by 2020, a compound annual growth rate of 40.4%. The regulatory technology market is expected to grow from 10.6 billion in 2017 to 76.3 billion by 2022, a compound annual growth rate of 48%. And last but not least, the, the global ERP market was estimated to be worth 31.4 billion in 2016. And uh, this mature market is expected to record an estimated compound annual growth rate of 7% during the forecast period to reach $47 billion by the end of 2022. So as we can see, it's a growing market, it's growing exponentially, a lot of business to be done, a lot of business to be had. So let's look at the key management first. Gary is the co-founder and CEO. He's also on the board at LSG, the parent company. Um, Andre is a certified uh, tax accountant or chartered tax accountant, and he is the chief financial officer. He's based in New York as well. Uh, Philip Knight is based in London. He's the program director. Um, he has been on the board of Ladies, which is a software for um, a legal um, documentation to talk to each other. And Siva Kumar is based in India. He's the director of business development for both LSG and also Expire. He's also the co-founder of Expire. Um, partners wise, they are uh, founding members of the International RegTech Association. They're also members of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. And they have um, partnerships with both Microsoft and R3. And they, those are core partnerships they refer to them as. Uh, so R3 is an enterprise software company. They're focused on building a proprietary blockchain inspired platform called Corda, which Expire will be using. And um, they have uh, a long client list, including KPMG and Hewlett Packard, etc. So uh, a quite an established company. Um, they also are closely working with Microsoft as well as a partner. And uh, the 
partnership with Devery is a strategic partnership. Uh, if you don't know what Devery is, it's a blockchain powered open source product verification protocol. And uh, they will um, be of good use when uh, Axpire start their preferred provider network uh, in which um, many businesses and projects can solve or service real um, uh, problem areas, problematic areas. They're also partnered with uh, Bounty Zero X. If you don't know who they are, they're a trustless bounty hunting network enabling anyone to post bounty campaigns um, to increase your company profile, especially when you're running ICOs. So scrolling down, they have a team of skilled individuals, they, they say. Dom Wolf and Henry Doe are recent pickups. Uh, Tristan is project communications lead. Sojan Lal is blockchain development lead and Sankar is a lead product architect and they've got other developers working in house as well with them. The advisory board is quite extensive as we can see there. They have uh, 11 advisors listed here. Uh, not least of all Roger Veer, the Bitcoin.com CEO and very polarizing figure indeed. Um, and um, some other uh, interesting people on this uh, this board include uh, Shingo Levine as well. He's the CEO of Ethos um, and he's involved in several blockchain startups. So um, yeah, very uh, interesting and competent advisory board as well. So they still seem to be quite active in the community as well. Their last tweet was only a couple of days ago, February the 27th in fact, uh, saying that they were gonna attend this blockchain conference in Dubai. They've got quite a substantial following still on Twitter as well. Uh, their reach is out to 5,381 followers. And let's just get a look at their um, Telegram as well, which uh, uh, somebody being warned there for uh, sending photos. That's naughty, naughty. And uh, yeah, they're, they're still, um, still uh, people using their Telegram. It's still being uh, monitored. And there's 7,364 people registered on their Telegram group. There's still discussion going on on their uh, subreddit as well, uh, but more importantly, they are keeping us updated with progress on their Medium blog as well, which I think is probably the best medium to use uh, post um, ICO to keep everybody informed. And uh, the last uh, posting was on February the 24th, um, just detailing all the recent um, things that they've been up to. Overall, community sentiment seems to be still quite positive around this project. There's a lot of people picking it as a small cap coin to invest in, uh, not least of all Juan ben, uh, Bueno at the top there. Um, I've just done a quick uh, Twitter search for AXP just to see the sort of um, feedback, what po people are posting about it. And uh, let's have a look down here. Um, People saying they're on fire, so that's good. Seems to be quite positive overall. There's one again saying um, you can now um, dive into AXP at below ICO price. Um, there's somebody else, Homo Cryptocus, saying uh, take a look into Expire. It's worth it and pretty cheap right now. Um, so again, you know, uh, most of the, um, there's another one, Ivan S. Uh, AXP with a little rocket ship there. So again, most of the community is very positive behind AXP at the moment. And uh, you can understand why given the, the current low price, it's under ICO price at the moment. And um, you know, it hasn't really uh, done anything since ICO. So they have three products they are rolling out at the moment. The first one is the business to business backend, which is called Resolver, and that's responsible for the spend management. They have a peer to peer marketplace called Matchbox Blockchain Exchange or MatchBX. And they also have this preferred provider network, which will um, basically act as a, um, or allow individuals, sorry, to participate in the platform as part of a new economy. Um, and you can apply as a, a, a freelancer or as a task creator. So you'll be able to um, find people to do different, different jobs and different tasks or advertise your, uh, your services as well. So the um, resolver process is like this. It basically automates processes, simplifies them and uses machine learning. It then reorganizes um, and enhances performance culture, which uh, utilizes or makes use of resources a bit better and uh, lessens the effort per transaction, which in turn boosts productivity 
and also improves the use of resources as well. So quickly on the blockchain, the technology, I have to say, is not explained very well at all in any of the material. Um, they could do with a polish up on that, I think. But um, as far as I could gather, R3's proprietary blockchain Corda will integrate with the existing LSG software solution C-Suite. It will be a, an agnostic software backend, which means it will have uh, the ability to communicate with existing accounting and finance software like Cowpa, QuickBooks, Hazeltree, etc. And uh, AXP itself is an ERC-223 token. That is an enhanced ERC-20 Ethereum token. It will be obviously on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, it's open source and also has an Apache license as well. So Resolver works as follows uh, in a four-step um, process. Number one is e-billing submission and validation. Number two, the bills are reviewed, adjusted, categorized, and allocated to paying entities. Number three, the account services validation and adjustment, and the payment data is collated automatically. And then number four, you've got the payment systems. So the token utility is not well defined either, but this is as uh, much as I could gather from it. Um, eventually vendors can use the AXP token for e-procurement and or e-bidding for expense contracts. Clients will be able to submit jobs to the platform with invoices payable in AXP. And if vendors plan to transact on the live network and submit invoices, they'll need AXP to cover the base fees for those transactions. And of course, as we discussed, it's currently tradable on the external exchanges, I think KuCoin and IDEX. Let's look at the tokenomics of Expire now. And the easiest way to do that, since it's launched off ICO already, is use CoinMarketCap. That gives us a lot of the information that we need. And we'll just uh, refresh it here just to get the latest um, updates. And as we can see, it's currently sitting at just under six cents, which is below ICO price. It has dipped slightly in the last 24 hours, down 6.44% against the dollar. It's currently at 547 Satoshis and 0 0.000067 of an Ethereum as well. And it's down on all three currencies there. So the circulating supply is currently at 256 million, just a shade over. Uh, the total supply, 350 million, giving it a market cap right now of 14,991,858 US dollars, which is significantly lower than you would expect a project of this size to be at. Now, if we... Uh, Scroll down, we can see it hasn't really performed since coming off ICO. It's all time high it was very early after it launched at 24 cents or uh, just under 25 cents there. So it really just uh, has been a victim of the recent bear market, I think. And it just hasn't had any significant enough news to gain any, gain any traction. And of course, it's not being assisted by the current market conditions, which seem to just be going sideways for altcoins at the moment. Now, if we look at the markets, it's available on KuCoin as an Ethereum and Bitcoin pairing, and also available on IDEX as well as an uh, Ethereum pairing. So just the two marketplaces. Um, historical data then, quickly. And let's just scroll down from its all-time high. I don't think it's been even over a month yet. In fact, let's just uh, double check and go to all time. There we are. So it launched on CoinMarketCap on January the 25th, where it was at 20, just under 26 cents is its all time high. And it's just been really downhill from there, unfortunately. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not really had a pump. It's not really had a, a, a chance to grow and as I said it's probably been affected by the current market and the fact that there's been no real major announcements from the team yet. So this is a new section I've introduced to the tokens to watch videos it's called issues and we'll just discuss any potential issues or problems with this project 
or any future project that I, uh, I review. Um, if you have any comments about the issues or problems that you've had, please post in the comments below. We are a community and it's to everybody's benefit that we help each other out. So the only issue that I came across was uh, during the ICO that apparently a fake website was set up called uh, Axpire.net and with the sole attempt of trying to access people's private keys and uh, obviously their funds in their wallet. And uh, obviously the real website's expire.com. So people went unwillingly to this website, as you can see here from this graphic, and some of them actually put in their private keys or um, JSON files to um, access the wallet, and then they lost all their funds. So um, the um, issue was that, you know, they, how did they get the people, the participants' email addresses? Um, you know, there must have been a leak or something from Axpire that allowed the um, email list to fall into the wrong hands. So uh, that was very unfortunate, but seems to be the only issue with the project. So to the future now, and what are the recent developments that have been happening? Well, they just did a website redesign. They uh, partnered with uh, Devery um, in a strategic partnership and they've hired Henry Doe as their new user interface, user experience lead. They also hired a guy called Dom Wolf. He's the group product director at Virgin Mobile and he's been hired as a pro product lead. They also joined the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance. And what's coming up? Uh, well, the CEO Gary Markham is speaking at Investment Summit in Dubai in March 19th, 2018. And Expire is actually sponsoring the conference as well. Um, there are some new partnerships in the crypto space mooted, as well as some new hirings of staff on the horizon. So the roadmap going forward is pretty vague. It doesn't really give us any detail of where they're at or what they're doing. Um, the major milestones here on the website, phase one, um, is in quarter one 2018 and quarter two 2018. In the first quarter, they're going to engage customers in the use of Expire for additional compliance-focused applications. In quarter two, they're going to release the updated version of Resolver incorporating the distributed ledger technology, so blockchain coming first half of this year. In phase two, quarter three 2018, they're going to broaden the scope to include the full ERP functionality and begin phase two of Expire. Quarter 4, 2018, they're going to engage industry agnostic customers on broadened Expire platform. They hope to have by then 500 plus users on the platform. In uh, quarter 1, 2019, they're going to continue to engage industry agnostic clients on broadened platform and implement the AI only software. Quarter 2 of next year, 2019, they hope to have 1,000 plus users on the new Expire Resolver platform. So to the final chapter, verdict time, and let's look at the positives first of this project. So first one um, is it's currently under pre-sale price uh, in US dollar terms. Pre-sale price was something like seven cents. It's currently at about six cents at the moment. So now is a good time. In fact, I would suggest it's probably the best time to pick this token up if you're interested in it. Um, and just as an aside here, at ICO, um, they were, I think it sold out at pre-sale actually, but I think if it had gone to ICO, it would have sold for 10 cents. <clears throat> so still quite a bargain. Number two, it's got a very low market cap of just under $15 million. So a lot of room for growth here. Number three, it hasn't had a pump since the ICO. Since it went onto the exchanges, it hasn't pumped. It's been a victim of the current bear market and it's just gone sideways. Number four, this company has existing revenue and existing businesses. So, you know, um, they're, they're not really overly concerned about um, uh, making this work for, for revenue. They've already got revenue. This will work on its own, um, off its own back. They've already been approached by a client to make it. Uh, and this is why they, they, they undertook the, um, the whole project. So, you know, the, it's, not a, it's not a make or break situation for them. Number five, um, the community remains optimistic on this project. There's still quite a lot of, uh, um, you know, bullish sentiment about this token. 
Number six, there's a distinct lack of competition to what this company are trying to do. Expire doesn't really have any direct competition in the blockchain space. They do have in uh, you know competing software, but you know that that's really immaterial. These guys are the only ones doing it on the blockchain. They do more and they do it better and they incorporate better technology. Number seven, their first client is one of the largest hedge funds in the world with 24 billion US dollars assets under management. So that gives, um, you know, there is a huge potential client base here. Um, not only one company, but you know, we've seen the clients that LSG have had before. Uh, and uh, you know that potential is absolutely phenomenal. Nine, the team has delivered already and there's no doubt they can deliver now. And number 10, they have an all-star advisory body, um, ticks all the boxes, including a couple of brand names, Shingo, Roger, thrown in there for good measure. So negatives of the project now, there are a couple. Number one, there doesn't seem to be any code available yet and there's no GitHub either. Uh, so is this an open source project or is it gonna be uh, proprietary and private? Number two, it's a vague roadmap. Um, it's not as defined. It doesn't have the vision I like in projects. It just seems to uh, be very vague overall. And, and that's a problem with some of the technical aspects of this, uh, this project too. It's very vague. Number three, they have an unclear and poorly defined token utility. They've just announced new uh, products like the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, um, you know, but still the, the token uh, utility is very poorly defined. They need to clarify. Number four, uh, limited technical information is available on the project and what is available is not sufficient. I would suggest that um, you know, they reword their white paper a little bit, they provide a little bit more information and uh, make it a bit more clear to investors, especially those with limited technical ability, like my good self. And number five, um, a minor complaint, but a niggle nonetheless, it's not the most exciting project. Uh, yeah, they need a bit more pizzazz injected into the, uh, um, the material. The website seems to be fine, uh, but yeah, it's not the most exciting project. I guess that's what happens when you deal with this kind of fintech regulatory technology uh, <laughs> software. You know, try to make it exciting is difficult. <laughs> Trust me, I had to sit through this review and you have as well now. <laughs> So a little uh, new section for the tokens to watch. Everybody wants to know the gains and potential of projects. And everybody asks me all the time, what's the potential gains? And I, I don't like making, um, you know, making predictions. And a few other YouTubers make predictions. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna give you a general overview of what I think this token can achieve, depending on the market sentiment. Now, there's four categories I've introduced here. One is ultra bearish which is probably the worst scenario of all. Bearish, which is roughly where we are at the moment in the, in the current marketplace, skittering between bearish and ultra bearish, I would say. We then have bullish, and then permabull, which is permanently bullish, completely bullish, if we just go on a, a complete crazy bull run uh, for a prolonged period. I've also introduced the current status of the project, or the, the token, and the outlook for it as well. So if we were looking at a ultra bearish um, market for AXP, what would we see? Well, it would stay where it is. It's a um, existing company with an existing revenue. They don't need the, uh, they'd like, but I'm sure they don't need the additional revenue from the token. So it's not gonna disappear. So it's gonna stay where it is if we're in an ultra bearish market. If we're in a bearish market, however, this has the potential to 2X. It's already gone from um, hitting the exchanges at around 25 cents down to six cents. So asking it to double in a bearish market is not really out of the question, especially if a pump group gets hold of it or they um, announce some great news about the project, another major, major client or new partnerships, etc., could easily propel this to a 2X, even with a bearish uh, market. Now, if the market w went bullish on us, this could easily achieve a 10X. Now, with the market cap at under $15 million, $150 million for the market cap here is not beyond 
this project's ability at all. So in a bullish market, 10x could quite easily be achieved. And in a perma bull market, in a permanently bullish market for a prolonged period, wow, I think we could see a 20x on this project. Um, you know, a 300 million market cap for this project with um, quality clients that LSG have already had behind it could see this at a, I would say, you know, 20x uh, potential here. So the current status on the project, I believe, is undervalued. I think it is still, un, un, you know, how could it not be undervalued at six cents with the um, low market cap of 15 million? And I think the outlook for this project is cautiously optimistic. Now, currently we're in a bearish market, you know, between ultra bearish for altcoins and bearish, I would say. So you've got to be cautious, um, but cautiously optimistic saying that, because I think there's potential there. Um, you know, it's at a very, very low uh, token price. And uh, now would be the time, I would say, to pick it up if you're interested in it. So final rating time. Well, I think that huge potential client base and a lack of competition with this uh, software make this a deserving um, product of much closer attention. I think you should look at it a little bit closely. I'm giving this three and a half out of five stars. It's let down by its uh, vague roadmap. Uh, you know, the technical details aren't clear enough. And, uh, you know, the token utility doesn't really uh, um, grab me by the balls. But aside from that, it's a very, very um, competent project. It's got a strong team. Again, massive client already in there. Um, so it's got a lot of potential. So I am bullish on this token. <laughs> there we go. So, uh, yeah. Um, and as I, get, I, you know, as I always say, guys, you've got to do your own due diligence, do your own research. Um, never invest more than you can afford to lose and um, just be aware of the risks and volatility involved in cryptocurrencies. Yeah, um, always invest wisely, always invest cautiously. And uh, this is only for entertainment purposes, guys. I'm not a financial advisor and this should not be construed as financial advice. So thanks for watching. I hope you, in, uh, you enjoyed our new token to watch format. AXP is certainly a token to watch for the future. Keep your eye on it. It's bound to do something. And, uh, you know, you just got to know that moment to pull the trigger, when to buy and when to sell uh, or whether to hold or whether to let go. You know, that's, uh, that's the tricky part. And it comes with experience and I'm by no means very uh, good at trading at all. Uh, I am a long term holder or hodler. And, um, you know, I've got a little baggie of uh, AXP. I'll be holding on to them for the longer term and see what clients they can bring on board. So thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow. Probably going to do an ICO review tomorrow. I've got a couple of interesting projects lined up for you. Um, and uh, we'll maybe do another token to watch next week, uh, depending whether um, there's anything comes on my radar. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow.